governor has come here to South Jersey to have a frank and open uh, talk about senior issues. The governor has been in the forefront of making sure that our seniors are provided for, and I'll turn it over to the governor. The fact is, we're going to pass a budget that is $200 million smaller than the budget that I inherited. We actually cut the budget uh, below where it was in 2006. And inside that, though, we have maintained all of our senior rebates, all of our senior programs. We've actually done something that's even gone beyond where we were. We increased the senior freeze up the income scale. It was at 60,000, we've moved it to 70,000, and we're gonna move it to 80,000 next year. We'll have about 70,000 more New Jersey seniors get the senior freeze this year than got it last year and we will we'll expand that to 130,000 next year um, and I hope people know that it is demonstrating with D what is our commitment to our uh, senior citizens. By the way we're not forgetting about our kids we've actually expended more on education than we did about a billion dollars more uh, in this budget than when I came in and you'll say, well, where, where's the difference? Well, the difference primarily is, is that we've reduced the size of government. People don't know this. We're down 7,000 employees since I came in to work. And we've increased, as you probably have seen, uh, some of the, the, the uh, responsibilities of, of our public employees. We've increased the retirement age from 55 to 62. We uh, capped defined benefit programs. Uh, ask for them to help pay for health insurance. But we had to do these kinds of things to try to get our budget under control. We've made some tough decisions. Hubert Humphrey was one of my heroes in my youth, and he said that, you know, the fundamental way you judge the character of a society is you look at how you deal with the folks that are in the dawn of our life, our kids, how you deal with those that are in the sunset of their lives, our seniors, and how the people in the shadows of life are actually dealt with. Yeah. <laughs> I'd rather hear from you, so, you know, I'd, uh, let's open it up here. I'm also a retired teacher, so kids are near and dear to my heart. Um, but I also know that most, the, most of the money that we put out in real estate taxes is for schools, more than 50% in most communities. How can we, in your mind, can we get it somewhat under control? For 40 years, the state has been debating what they call the Abbott rulings. Mm -hmm. 40 years. And we put together a new school funding formula that will rebalance how we distribute uh, school aid uh, across the state. And the, the fact is we're not undermining the amount of resources we're providing for at-risk kids in urban areas, but we are going to make sure that we have the resources for the kids in other parts of the state. I think this school funding formula is going to transfer more of the responsibility for education onto income tax as we go forward uh, than anything that's been done, uh, I think, in the last 40 years. And it has to be, because we have to make sure that every child, wherever they are, is getting this kind of support that the state is giving to make sure that we have adequate education. And that, I think, is going to put more and more responsibility on the state, and I think we're leaving that in a natural context.